A great novelist once said, when it comes to women, men are idiots. They don't know what they want, so they don't want what they get for very long. I mean, they want cheesecake, ham and eggs, and oatmeal, and they want it all at the same time. I know what this guy was talking about. Whoa, he had a on leash, you know. Oh, yeah, he's pretty vicious. Attack, boy! Kill! <laughs> Can I say he's a chronic underachiever? He's beautiful. <laughs> what is he? He's a Rhodesian Ridgeback. They hunt lions in Africa. This one's totally harmless, though. He's never been in a fight in his life. Jim Lomax. I'm the dangerous one. <laughs> he seemed totally harmless. <laughs> Come on, Magic. Come on. You don't know me. Tell her, would you? He didn't call? You know he never calls. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, okay? How's the water in there? Treacherous, turning to ice as we speak. Uh, are we sweating it? Never. And why is that? Because we don't know any better. That's right. It always goes the same way. She'll want to know why I'm not more committed. It's not a question I like to answer. It would eat away at us like a rust. Then she'll borrow my leather jacket just about the time the relationship falls apart for good. And I'll lose my favorite jacket. I don't need that. A good jacket is hard to find. Roots. When you know what's real. So? What, they want my blood? Well, I believe the phrase they used was, you're the voice of your generation. <laughs> Get out of here. Good work. <laughs> Hi, I'm returning this. Local hero. Local hero? One of my all-time favorites. <laughs> I don't know, the guy finds paradise and gives it up for Houston? Okay, we've got Robo Slut and Lollipop Lovers. I fast forward through the sex and study the stories. <laughs> That's too bad. Robo Sluts are one of my all-time favorites. Is there a market open this late around here? Uh, just uh, right down... Right down on 3rd. Capers. I got the best produce in town. Thanks. It'll be 6.43. Capers. Help me out of here, or do I gotta keep doing this ridiculous stunt to get your attention? Looks like you're doing fine to me. Thank you. <sighs> you know what? Maybe I should just take both. Oh, yeah, I'll take both. Just ring the both up. Wild berry and tutti fruit. Would you like to go ahead of me? Hmm? I'll take a second to think about this. It's gonna be a minute. Looks that way. Have you ever had this? Tutti frutti.
So you like blues? Huh? I know this nice little piano bar we could go hit. We could go to the Grand View. That's that's pretty cool. It's fancy. You can skip the moves. The game's already over. Really? So how'd I do? Can I get a pack of Randolphs? How about a box of those red numbers there? Ooh, a dozen for Mr. Lucky. That's right, the old 12 pack. Uh, you take Visa? Yeah. Gotta go get some cash. Throw in one of those $2 roses, too. Unbelievable. You don't live here by yourself. I do now. What, you're divorced? Isn't everyone? You better switch to decaf. You tell me. Okay. You grew up in some Midwestern suburb. You thought if you didn't get out, you'd suffocate. You were quick in school? Although it didn't interest you that much. For you, anatomy was destiny. Since you are, what, 14, 
Uh, might have been hitting on you. Guys on the streets, teachers, your dad's friends, men in restaurants. And you went out with some of them. Because they took you places. They bought you things. Jewelry, perfume. And you almost married some high school Harry. But you knew you could do better. He's coaching football now. Mm -hmm. And used to. Mm -hmm. And then you started working. Modeling, maybe. Nightclub singer. Really? Wow, well, I'd like to hear something. Mm -hmm. I don't know you well enough. <laughs> um, anyway, the men got richer and smarter. They started calling you from their private planes. And you knew a life of luxury was just a wedding ring away. If you're too smart, they call you trouble. But keep that mouth shut and they think you're wise or very sweet. I've had men propose to me without even hearing me finish a sentence. I like talking to you. Shut up. Buddy, I think we got a contender here, I'm telling you. Miss Wright. She's beautiful. She's got the biggest blue eyes you've ever seen. There's one for you, too. You're gonna love me. She's got a little attitude. I think you gotta treat her rough, though. She is tough. This is all yours, baby. I can do what I want, I'm in complete control, and that's what I tell myself. I got a mind of my own, I'll be all right alone, don't need anybody else. I gave myself a good talking to, honey, no more being you, but I Hi, sweetie. Hi. Where's Matthew? He's at the lake with the Johnsons for the weekend. Well, I missed you. City Council votes in two weeks on our building permit. So far, Hill and Lee Fong are with us. Forbes and Romano are solid against. They gave the city a community center, low flow toilets. What the hell do they want? Sachs is the swing vote. He's leaning against us, but he's not solid. Sachs, the hefty one? Mm. We can't get to him. Why not? I want to know his pleasures. You play up our environmental image. The people think we're greenies. They'll force their councilmen to vote for Shoreline. You need to go on local TV as Mr. Clean.
Roger. Roger. Mr. Clean. He closes in on her looking for a long kiss. Hey, here's your bill. Well, let me get that. Her money's counterfeit. Thank you. And then what? She pushes him away? No, I hate that. Like she's some um, ice queen gonna melt when he touches her? No, she kisses him as long as she wants. This will make a great spot. All your late night research is really paying off. Yeah. This boy girl stuff really works well on TV. So your cargo's declined. That's impossible. Run it through again. Sorry, I tried that. It's okay, I've got it. I pay my bill. So, what do you mean by excessive inquiries into my credit history? I pay my bills. Who, who's asking? Why is that classified? It's my account. Huh? Well, that's not my problem. I guess that is my problem. It always goes the same way. She'll want to know why I'm not more committed. But it's not a question I like to answer. It would eat away at us like a rust. It's a lovely day. Then she'll borrow Hi, another honey. jacket just about the time the relationship falls apart for good. And I'll lose my favorite jacket. What do you think of this? I don't need that. Boy. A good jacket is hard to find. No. I mean the guy. Do you find him sexy? Just another face man with testosterone poisoning. So, you don't get turned on by a guy like this, huh? I didn't say that, darling. Ultimately, these guys are all too quick to excite. Look at the flowers, erotic poetry, all of their best moves the first few weeks. But they just don't have your staying power, darling. Mm. Ah, Roger Everett, Jim Lomax, our creative director. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. Uh, my associate, Billy Webster. I've seen your work. Thanks. Jim, Nancy, Roger's got something I'd like you to hear. We're going to be spending $60 million to develop the waterfront. We've promised the city uh, a new community center, environmental toilets, <laughs> the whole nine yards. But the council is split on the decision. Shoreline is the most environmentally correct project that this city has ever seen. We have to get that message out to the green voters so that they can put pressure on the council. Roger wants a promotional campaign. Something direct and unpretentious for local cable. The big agencies would push too hard on this. Roger feels a smaller, younger firm might communicate better with the average Joe. I've seen your spots, Jim. They're fresh, down to earth. Even a little naive. Naive? Yes, but uh, that's what I'm looking for. They come to the house with a video crew for a day in the life of Roger Everett and family. We want the people to fall in love with Roger. Convince the people that I'm just like them. If they have faith in me, their councilman will have faith in Shoreline. Well, what do you say? Am I an average Joe? There is absolutely nothing exceptional about you at all. Jim is our Mr. Average Vanilla Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I'm the Joe for the job. I'm sensing celebration. Okay, four restaurants, four courses. Then we go to any store you want. I break in and steal the item of your choice. Now, how's that sound? Well, it's a start. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. They left the stereo. Somebody thrashed my car. They left the stereo. Take it easy, Jim. We'll call the cops. Hello? 
Hello, Jim. It's Caroline. Hey, mystery woman. I had fun the other night. Yeah, me too. When can I see you again? Now. Where? At the market. Okay, I'll meet you at 15. Try to find me. What took you so long? <laughs> I've never been down in the basement bakery here before. <laughs> Caroline Blue. Hey, big fella. Hey. The love of my life. Hey, easy. I'm not jealous times. <laughs> I don't think so. What a cozy place. Do you own it? It's an illegal sublet. Some freaky deadhead's been gone so long, the landlady forgot all about him. Play? It's a paperweight.
Is she taller than him? She looks taller. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> How did you get this one? Hidden camera? <laughs> Long lens to the window. Have you seen the ones from the market? I haven't got there yet. I must say I'm a little surprised by this. I thought you'd be more upset. Upset? Billy, I'm devastated. <laughs> when you've been married as long as I have, you need to give yourself a little challenge now and then. Get Jim Lomax on the phone. Tell him I'd like to buy him a beer. <laughs> What do you left me here? Yeah. I'm sorry, excuse me. See, I want you all the action in this place, and I just thank God that I don't have to chase chicks anymore. You're kidding? That's half the fun of it. That's the beauty of marriage, Jim. You find your partner for life. And that's it. I admire that. I do, but me, I am definitely not in that place. So, uh, you're not a family man, huh? Not yet. I bet families are important to you, Jim. Absolutely. Well, if anything ever threatened my family, I'd do whatever it takes. If somebody tried to tear my family apart, I'd rip his eyes out. Listen, I, uh, I don't want to involve you in my problems. Now, wait a minute. Okay, Raj, come on. All right, I'll talk to you. <laughs> all right, all right. Tell me, what would you do with a wife who needs every man she meets to fall in love with her? I mean, everyone. Wimps, losers, nobodies, everyone. Dump. What? Dump. Come on. You don't need them. I'm telling you, I, I, I could holler your name out here, and 30 chicks would be throwing themselves at your feet. <laughs> hey, Roger Ace! Stay there, everybody! <laughs> Listen, there's only one like her. The awful truth is, is that I'm still in love with her. I don't know what to do. That's a problem. Here. Toss this one. Huh. Heads, I kill her. Tails, I kill him. All right. Ooh. Tails. Looks like you're stuck with them. <laughs> would you, um... Would you like to see a picture of her? Sure. Go in here somewhere. Huh. Yeah. Uh, she's the one on top. What's the matter, Jim? You look quite ill. I'll be right back. Run with the big dogs. You better learn how to piss on the big trees. Uh, oh, you are not going to believe this. You will not believe this. You slept with Roger Everett's wife? No. I slept with an incredibly beautiful woman that I did not know was married. She didn't mention being married? I thought she was divorced. Does she wear a ring? No. So I take it you're not going to see her again? Definitely not. I'm Jim Lomax. I'm here to see Roger. Is Mr. Everett expecting you? I really don't know. Jimmy! Hello, what are you doing here? Good to see you. Come on, sit down. 
I came to apologize. Man to man. Man to man? Ooh. That sounds ominous. I think we should clear the air here. Um, whatever happened between me and your wife, uh, I had no idea she was married. So I'm, I'm sorry. It's a lousy thing. I, if I'd have known, I would have never have done it. Well, you're doing the honorable thing. I admire you for that. Well, I'm apologizing. What else can I do? Well, I suppose we could fight a duel. Two honorable men, pistols at dawn. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? Well, no. Not really. Oh, well, what a pity. I wish you did. Then I could screw her and then apologize after. Then no one would lose face. I know you trashed my car. Mmm, delicious. Mm. Try the yellow tail. You can't go after people like that. You know, you've got a vivid imagination. I like that. I know it was you. The smartest warrior, Jim, is the one who never has to fight. Exactly. Alan, I'm afraid gravity is beginning to take its toll on you. What? Maybe sit-ups are the answer or liposuction. Can't be sure. Ah, you're sagging all over. Especially in contrast to lover boy here. The truth is, you're not in shape for this anymore, are you? Surprise. It's time to call first, all right? Why didn't you tell me you were married? You didn't ask. You didn't have a ring. <sighs> Come on. You were looking for a commitment? Roger knows. I think he wants to wring my neck. And you can be a little possessive sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah. Does this happen a lot? <sighs> you don't get it. My life looks comfortable. But it isn't. You reminded me of that the other night. Thank you. and then pan up to his face. Go up to his face and hold. And we'll get that wide shot. Look at this guy. Boy, I'd like to leave him out there for a while. <laughs> Here you go, Matthew. 
Let's draw all the things that we can do to help the environment. Good. Give your mother a kiss. Mmm, honey. I love you. Now, what are we going to do with our aluminum cans? Well, we can recycle them. Recycle them, huh? I don't blame you. Hmm? She's gorgeous. And he's rich and powerful. <sighs> All right for you, Jim. Beautiful. You had enough of Roger's charades, too? Do you love him? I don't know. Who cares? Well, it's all that really matters. I never pegged you as a philosopher. Must be easy with no responsibilities. Hey, fine. You want to be rich and miserable the rest of your life? Go right ahead. Oh, so you're just going to leave and let me punch it out with him, right? You want to go? Huh? Let's go. Is that an offer? Or are you playing social work? No, you go get your son and we'll split right now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, I think Sinai has a. Did you guys get everything you need? I think so. How about you? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You referring to? Do you want me to tell you about that? I think I have a pretty good idea. Thank you. Okay. Wait a second. I. I'm, you want? Okay. Listen. Let's talk about this for a second. All right. There's this guy. Oh. Right, he's walking down the street with his wife, and he looks over and he spots this unbelievably desirable woman. And he knows that if he crosses that street, or even looks at her, that his wife's going to bring it. She's going to crush him. She's going to leave him, take the kids, take his money. He's going to be broken lonely for the rest of his life. So now knowing this, what do you think the guy does? He crosses the street. <laughs> this is funny to you? No, no, this... This is just reveal. Well, let me reveal something to you. I had a little chat with that Webster character. Apparently you're not the irresistible Caroline's first fling. Oh, thank you. Tell me something I don't know. She was seeing some artist. Roger found out and systematically destroyed the guy's life. He lost his gallery, his apartment, everything. Really? What happened? He went out into the ocean one day and never came back. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Fong, you want some pasta? Illegal subland. Must get out. One week. Everett's here. Where? The men's room, I think. Get out of my office. Your office? 
Ooh, nice smell. Fuck you. Profanity is the sign of a lazy mind, Jim. Beside the fact that I find it personally offensive. Now, every action has its consequences. Pollute a river, fish suffer. Have an affair with my wife, I suffer. When I suffer, you suffer. The law of nature. Hey. Thought you might be hungry. Oh. Peking duck. Best inside of Hong Kong. How's it going? Terrible. I can make this guy look like Gandhi, and he's still gonna hate it. Awfully paranoid, Jim. Dale, I'm telling you as your friend, he's not gonna come through for you. This is a personal thing. The guy really doesn't like me. That's ridiculous. He set this whole thing up. That's what he does. He finds your weaknesses and he uses them. And what's my weakness? You're greedy. No. I'm ambitious. It's time you learn the difference. I'm going to work my ass off on this campaign. It's not going to matter. You wait and see. It's times like this we should all be environmentalists. Down on the job? Oh, God. How you doing, buddy, huh? You'll be all right. Some of this in here. So he wrecked your car? That's right. He broke into my house and he poisoned my dog. How do you know your dog was poisoned? Chow down if you don't believe me. <clears throat> How do you know it was the same guy? Because this guy is nuts, and he hates me. Why is that? What are you, a family, a business partner? You own money? What? I slept with his wife. Do you think you could talk to him? No, you talk to him. And you better hope he's a forgiving man. Yeah, but, but what if he's not? I mean, you just gonna sit here until he comes after me? You should have considered that before you did his wife. Can't you get a restraining order? Try to find a cop when you need one. You don't want him all cooped up in here all day. He's not gonna eat your couch. You just gotta walk him twice a day and he won't crap inside. You don't ask for much, do you? Look, I'm desperate here. I love this dog. It's the most committed relationship I've had in years. No comment. What are we gonna do about Roger? I'm sure my mechanic would kill him for 8250 labor plus parts. Roger Everett cares about our environment. His shoreline project will generate $5 million a year in taxes to save our waterfront. And Mr. Everett has pledged an additional $2 million out of his own pocket for the Sierra Club. 
This is a chance we can't afford to miss. It's times like this we should all be environmentalists. Very nice. Interesting. Evidence of solid work here. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. If something bothers you, or if you have any suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Hmm. Good work, guys. We'll talk later. I just want to wish you good luck on your campaign, Raj. Jim, why don't you tell him why you're really doing this? I'm sorry about that. I gotta tell you, I think the spot's right on the money. That two million for the Sierra Club, very smart politically. And very generous, I might add. The two million, Dale, is Lomax's idea of a joke. I have no intention of giving those owl lovers one cent. Um, I'm truly sorry, Roger. I... Jim's been a little strung out lately. I... The attitude I can live with, but... The work. You didn't like the piece. Uh, listen, I know you're a great friend of his. No, no, just... Tell me what's on your mind. If you expect the kind of capital infusion that we've been talking about, you're going to need stronger, more experienced people. I understand. Ah. I want you to apologize to him now. No way. That man is a client. And a friend of mine. Yeah, some friend. The guy would tattoo a duck on your back and you'd quack every time he whistled. Why don't you get out of here and go cool off? I slept with his wife, Dale. You what? Yeah. I didn't know she was married. And that's why Roger's here. Because he knows and he wants to ruin me. Jesus. Jesus. Look, um, let me get into this. I'll see what I can do. I'll talk tomorrow. No, you won't. You're going to fire me tomorrow, so why don't you just do it now? Why are you doing this? Because I want to know if you got the balls to say it. Don't push me, Jim. Come on. Say it. Say it. Come on. Okay, you're erratic. That's weak. And you're a liability with the client. Now we're getting somewhere. I don't want to do this. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You know why? Because the only thing that's coming between you and the big bucks is me and my attitude. Okay. You're fired. Wow. You did it. I knew you could. Boy, Roger should buy himself a good duck. Get out. Quack, quack. Hey! Hey! What are you doing? Hey, Raj. How does it feel? Oh. I'm making a citizen's arrest. You better get yourself another job, Lomax. A meager, pathetic little job. And know that anything you have, I can take away from you any time I want. Except your wife. You son of a bitch. Caroline may like you, but she doesn't respect you. You were a mistake of curiosity, incompatible with the life she wants. Keep it down over there. 
Could you please just keep it down a little bit, please? Ah, kiss my royal butt, pal! Ha, ha! See you to know each other. How are you? We're old friends. How's Jim? Well, on a scale of one to ten, I'd say zero. And I'm the witch that did it to him, right? Now you want me to keep my claws off of him? Is that why you call? Jim's a trailer park kid. He's earned his way in the world. Now this thing with you is destroying him. This may shock you, but I actually care for him. No, you don't. If you did, you'd bail him out of jail. Why don't you bail him out of jail? You think I'd ask you if I had the ten grand myself? I can't get that kind of money without Roger finding out. If you care for him, you'll get it. Blue! Come on! God, 20 years of wine I slept in that cell. I could use a shower. Go ahead. I'll wait. Okay, what are we doing? I'm going after your husband. Do you want to be a part of that? What are you going to do? Humiliate him? Destroy him? I don't know. Whatever it takes. Jim! This, I, I got the puck and I was skating past the, all these other men. Ah, the and hockey I, story. Yeah, and then and then I scored a goal. So we got our team. I'm not going to tell that story. Well, I'm going to tell that story. Well, I'm going to There you are, Councilman Sachs. I've got something to show you. My wife? This way. Came down and our flag went up. <laughs> <laughs> City Council get to vote next week. Councilman Sachs has the swing vote. Uh, <laughs> he seems to be in very good hands. <laughs> I should meet him. Oh. I'll introduce you. I'm on the guest list. Amazing what you can do with editing. You should have seen some of the original footage. I took the odd couple and made them look like Ozzy and Harriet. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me, Councilman. Hi, how you doing? Uh, has Everett finally convinced you? No, not yet. But you're here. <laughs> I'll be at the rally for the other side tomorrow. Oh, really? You mean you must be the last honest Councilman on the planet? I don't appreciate your cynicism. My colleagues are hardworking, decent people. I'm sure they are, sir, but I do know how convincing Everett can be. I mean, your vote is worth millions to him. 
I don't know if I caught your name. Who are you? Just another honest man, sir. Jim Lomax. Perhaps I could help you make up your mind about our friend Roger. So we're out there dumping tons of garbage all over the yard, right? This guy, Roger, he doesn't say a word. He's picking it up as if he spent his whole life in garbage. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Raj. Your producer has been telling war stories from the campaign. Producer? What producer? Roger and I had what they call creative differences on the campaign. He wanted to pledge a portion of his profits to certain environmental groups as kind of a bribe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was bad business. Since uh, his profits are also my profits, I must take your side on this issue. Uh, are you also preparing... Uh, presentation Tuesday night. Uh, no. Pettit's on that. They're quite good. You might see my hand in there somewhere, though. I'd like to talk to you about that. Would you excuse us? So you came back for some more, did you, Jim? Oh, I'm so glad. Raj, <laughs> buddy, uh, you're gonna run with the big dogs. You gotta learn to piss on the big trees. <laughs> nice talking to you. Canada it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, man. I took Matthew to my sister's. I don't think I should stay here very long. You want some honey? Please. What are you gonna do, shoot it out with him at high noon? Let's not get carried away. Do you need some help? Roger, I'm going to pick up some takeout. We'll eat in about an hour. Fine, okay. Oh, oh, you got a call from that guy at the party? Who, Canada? No, the Heaviset guy. He's a college professor, councilman, something like that. You mean Sachs? Councilman Sachs? Yeah, that's right. Actually, it was his wife who called. He'd like you to call him at his office at 8 o'clock sharp tonight. What for? I don't know. Oh, no, wait a minute. She did say the councilman will solve all your problems. Was that all? Yep. You want that spicy shrimp thing? Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Okay, have a good workout. Caroline! Caroline! Now listen to this. Such a melodic sensuous line boy these guys just play the dickens out of this okay okay now do me a favor when, when he calls don't hustle him all right we want him to make the offer just stick to small talk hello how are you that sort of thing you won't call it's too smart for this and tell him you want to meet him alone no go betweens no no nobody else uh, he won't call it's too risky no, he's gonna call you look like little red riding hood to him it's the big bad wolf
talk with my son's teacher the other day. Terrific woman, caring, bright. Do you know what she gets paid? 32,000. It's an outrage. Well, we, uh, we get the education system we pay for. Doesn't make it right, though, does it? I mean, look at you. All the hard work you do for the council, teaching, community college. Uh, you probably don't make too much more than that, do you? 34,000 last year. It's a crime. See, I think it's up to the civic-minded businessmen to even up the inequities in our society. I'd be really honored if you'd pass this along to the educational group of your choice. Well, look, what's the matter? You called me, remember? I didn't call you. All right. Your wife called my wife, whatever. I'm sorry, there must be some kind of a misunderstanding. I was working late in my office, and you called and asked for a meeting. Look, I don't know what you're up to, but I'll give you 30 seconds to decide. And don't dream about taking the 50 grand and stiffing me on the vote. What's the matter? In your position, you can hardly afford to be high-minded. Listening to you, I've decided to vote against Shoreline. Oh, really? I don't think it's in the best interests of the city. Oh, well, nobody that earns 34 grand a year tells me what's best for this city. Look, think about it, hmm? My door is always open. Thank you. Well, good evening and welcome to the show. We are very fortunate tonight to have as our special guest a man who is probably the most environmentally conscious developer in America, Mr. Roger Everett. make it. Uh, this kid fell off a jungle gym and split his chin open. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Is that ham and pineapple? No, yeah, I want some. As a matter of fact, I think Roger even waters his lawn with recycled bath water. <laughs> you ever see the Viking Olympics? You throw trees around and stuff? Yeah, we're going to one. What do you think about the shoreline stuff? Yeah, it's the same old, same old. The rich get richer. Would you like to do something about it? <laughs> well, I don't really give a shit about it, to tell you the truth. Be able to make a couple of bucks in the process. Oh, yeah. How's that? So, without further ado, let's have Mr. Roger Everett. Thanks for coming, Roger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome. You know, we're very proud of Shoreline. There you go. There you go. It's going to uh, add a lot to this community in terms of jobs creating investment and wealth. And uh, so get your checkbooks ready. Get ready to write a deposit for one of these beautiful condos. Um, forget about uh, trying to buy the penthouse. It's already been sold. I bought it this morning. We prepared a short clip for you, and uh, if there are any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them after you've seen our presentation. Thank you very much. I'd be really honored if you'd pass this along to the educational group of your choice. Hmm? Look, what's the matter? You called me, remember? 
I didn't call you. Open the door, Jim! Door! Right, go get the janitor. Come on. Hurry up! Jesus. I don't know what you're up to, but I'll give you 30 seconds to decide. And don't dream about taking the 50 grand and stiffing me on the boat. Who said there was nothing good on TV? Please, sit down, please. Uh, everything is fine. Please, sit down. Sit down, please. Thank you. What's sit down. Everything's fine. We're, we're, um, position, we're getting everything back to normal. Uh, please, just sit down. Everything's fine. It's all right. Please. You, I've, Sorry. I've decided uh, to we're changing the film. Um, <laughs> damn thing off. Oh, really? I don't think it's in the best interest of the city. Mr. Canada. Oh, well, nobody that earns 34 me. grand a year tells me what's best. Mr. Canada, please, please, don't go. Um, uh, there's been a miscommunication, a misunderstanding. This is our dream. We can make this work. Please. You can always give money to charity. Building a relationship here. Great campaign, don't you think? Think about it, huh? My door is always open. Did you do anything fun tonight? I watched a great TV program. Can make a good series. <laughs> you did it! Woo! Ah. <laughs> Come on, we should go. See my wife? You're trespassing. That means I could shoot you and the cops won't care. That's a gun, Jim. Guys like you don't use guns. Try me. Oh, there you are, dear. It's time to go home now. Get out of here, Roger. What game would you like, dear? Would you like me to play the jealous husband and beat your lover to death? <laughs> it's no game, pal. Let me just get this straight, Jim. You mean to tell me that you love my wife, you want to marry her? Build a home, have a family with her? Oh, oh wait a minute. Take it easy, Jim. No one need get shot here. Just put the gun down. Not until you leave. Put the gun down! All right. Look, this isn't getting us anywhere. Carolyn, darling, look me straight in the eye and tell me you don't love me anymore and I'll go quietly. I hate you. Now get out of here and leave us alone. All right. Uh, let's look at this thing from your side. Well, he's younger, prettier, free in the afternoons. <laughs> now, what about my side? We have wealth, power, respectability. Hmm? Well, that's not too shabby. Not to mention the fact that I'm already your husband and the father of your child. All right, that's enough. That's enough. 
Now this is a big gun, Jim. I doubt you've ever fired a gun at a living creature before. That's before I met you, Raj. You taught me to stand up for myself. Thanks. Well, now this is your final exam. Go on. Go on. Go ahead. Pull the trigger. You think I won't? I think you're a wimp. Shoot him. There seems to be a little confusion here, darling. Are you talking to him or to me? <laughs> hmm? <laughs> ah! 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 And I love you. Imagine what I'm going to do to him. See, Jim, she respects me too much. you couldn't keep her because she was still in love with me. <laughs> yes. You're insanely jealous, so you lured me here to kill me. Luckily, I was able to prevail. Sadly, you were killed. <laughs> Remember that great novelist? D.H. Lawrence was his name. He said, if only we could have two lives. The first in which to make our mistakes, and the second in which to profit from them. I'm just trying to get it right the first time.
I'm running to meet you. Shovel alive.